Hi, this is Lavana from the Cottage of Grace. Um, I wanted to do a quick video about my migraines. Um, I have alluded to the fact that um, I suffer from migraines daily, which um, I pretty much do. And today's a migraine day, unfortunately. And um, I just kind of want to give you an insight as to what it is that I personally, as a migraine sufferer, go through. My first migraine started in 1989. I was scrubbed in a case in the operating room where I worked, and this searing pain shot through the right side of my head right here. And I had to break scrub, and I was like throwing up in the scrub sink, and I had no idea what it was. It scared me to death, and went to the emergency room and was told it was a migraine. and. Um, I would get maybe one or two at most a year from that point on. Um, in 2008, um, they became a daily occurrence, and by that I mean truly daily. Like I was incapacitated in bed. Um, I had just returned from a mission trip from Israel, and so I had to go through a whole slew of tests to make sure that I didn't have some kind of, you know, disease or something that I had caught because we worked out in the desert. Um, you know, doing construction and stuff on a kibbutz, and um, all of that ruled out, came back fine, of course, which I knew I knew that would be the case. Um, and then I was coming home, I was driving, I had to go see my grandma, because her husband, my step-grandfather, was very ill and soon to die, and I made my last trip down there to see him in Oklahoma, and on my way back, the tire on my car blew out and I went to a ditch and I hit my head real hard and of course was in the emergency room of course it started a migraine and they did an MRI and there was some slight degeneration at the C1 C2 joint which is basically right through here at the very base of your brain and um, I started going through a lot of different medications like Imatrex Axert, Zomig, you name it, I went through it as far as the triptans go. I went through the ergot medications. I went through a slew of, you know, anti-seizure medications. They took me off of my Primrin because I had had a hysterectomy shortly after my daughter was born. Um, everything and anything to rule out what it was. So finally, the my local hospital that I, I, I go to, they're like, there's nothing more we can do for you. We do not know what's going on. I was sent to a pain specialist who deals with uh, oh, headaches that start, you know, within the neck region going up into the head. And um, he did trigger point injections throughout my scalp. He did... Um, a steroid lidocaine injection at the C2, C3 level, uh, did nothing, absolutely nothing, and um, there were other things that I went through. Finally, he did an injection at the C1, C2 area, and it hurt for a good couple of days. I was actually hospitalized because it hurt so bad it caused a migraine flare-up, which they will do that the, uh, if they hit the right spot. But then all of a sudden I had relief for the first time in like a year and a half, two years. So um, we would, he did several more of those and usually the injections are only done to locate the area that is painful. Um, but my insurance would not approve the one thing that they said would give me, you know, ultimate relief, which was an ablation of the nerves that run through the vertebrae, the facet joints at the C1, C2 area. So finally, after three, well, last year, it, I had it done in September, so it was two years. Um, it's been three years now. Um, we did the ablation a year ago, and it exacerbated all of my pain, and it failed. And about the time that the nerve would be waking up, which would have been about six to nine months later, um, in February of 11 this year, I guess the nerve sort of woke up, even though it never really went to sleep and died. Um, everything became worse. I, I get vertigo, like the whole room just like on me, and I will fall. I have fallen so hard, like literally just fallen backwards on my bottom to the point where I've had abscesses and had have surgeries. 
Um, I had to walk with a walker for a while. Um, I went from February till, gosh, in the middle of this June that I literally, I couldn't drive anymore. And um, I started to get days where I can tolerate the pain better, where a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, um, you know, where I can function about a 4 or 5. Um, but then I've had times where I've had literally no pain at all. Um, but when they come, they come. And I can tell I've got pain going through here, right here. Um, and it travels up into this side of my head. It never goes anywhere else. And um, I'm nauseous. And usually, like with my videos, everything is chipper. This is my room. <laughs> uh, this is where I spend all my time. And right now, all the lights are on. But as a migraine sufferer, most people know lights and sound. And for me, smells bother me a lot. So this is where life becomes dark for me. And like a little kid, I've become, it's not that I'm afraid of the dark, but this is what I have lived in for three years. And thank God I have a doctor who has been good to me, my pain specialist, and he has worked with me and helped me to find ways to handle my pain at home. Um, because I get, the ER doesn't like to see me coming in the door. Uh, here is my medication box. All of that stuff keeps me functioning. Some of it's blood pressure medication and things like that that I have to take anyway. I've taken that for years. But um, I can now do at-home shots, which is amazing because a lot of doctors won't do that for you. But I, their goal is to keep me out of the emergency room. If I do end up in the emergency room, it's because I have had like a cycle of like seven days of trying to fight this on my own and I can't do it anymore and um, usually I'm hospitalized and I'm there for a good you know five to seven days the longest I've been hospitalized is 12 and then another one was the 14 because uh, I'd gone in for the migraine cycle that wouldn't break but then I had surgery because of the abscess um, but I have been um, verbally, I'm going to sit here since I just shut my bedroom down, I've been verbally abused by doctors and nurses, not so much the nurses as much as it is doctors. I have been, and some doctors will talk to me about my medications in a very appropriate, polite manner, um, but they understand I work with a pain specialist and I give him you know, him or her, the doctor, the phone number, you know, to please call my pain specialist and let them know what's going on. And they will explain to my local ER that this is truly the case. But I have been verbally accosted and been called an addict. I have been called a drug seeker. I had a doctor literally in front of me and my family tell me I was wasting precious hospital resources and staff time by coming into the emergency room for a migraine. And who was I to think that I was, you know, so sick that I needed that kind of help, that there were people in the emergency room who were, you know, bleeding and having far worse issues than me. And um, this has happened twice to me. Um, and as a patient, I learned my rights and I exercised them quite quickly, let me tell you. But as a patient, you also have responsibility, and by that, I mean, be proactive about your care. Um, I keep my appointments with my pain specialist. I stick directly to the pain contract that we have as far as medication goes. Um, and I have also sought other kind of treatments like chiropractic care and, um, oh gosh, oh, let's see acupuncture, you know, massage. I've gone through two rounds of physical therapy and we're going to start that back up here again now that I'm able to drive more. Um, so, you know, if you're a migraine sufferer, I, I want you to understand that I know exactly what you feel. If you're a patient who can take 
you know, like the migraine, Excedrin, or the Advil and be done with it, you are so blessed. But track your migraines, see what keeps, you know, make sure you don't have a trigger. Some people are just triggered because they've eaten too much chocolate or they had a glass of wine. I do not drink, I do not smoke. I eat very little chocolate or sweets of any kind. Um, I do not eat yellow cheeses, I only eat white if I eat cheese. Um, do not eat any MSG. But for me, my trigger is the fact that I have joint deterioration. It's not surgically fixable right now. Um, so I'm at the stage where it's just medications and physical therapy and babying myself when a migraine day comes. Um, right now, I would say my pain is like at a six or seven, which is not bad. But if I catch it now, and if I do something about it now, and I take the time out to hopefully stop it in its tracks, then it won't lead into a cycle that I can't stop. And um, that's been hard for me to do because as a wife and mom, I want to be the best at everything I can be. You know, I want to be a part of everything. I want to visit with my children. I want to make supper. I want to do everything. I want to spend time with my husband. And I've literally had life robbed from me for three years. I've missed Christmases with my family and other holidays or cookouts with family or birthdays. or And it's not because I want to. Believe me, I don't. It's because what can you do? So I wanted to give you an idea of what it is when I say I suffer from migraines. It's not the, you know etc. commercial kind of migraine. I wish to God, I pray to God that that was the case and maybe one day that'll work for me. Um, but for now it doesn't. I use what I can. I'm th so thankful that I have a pain doctor that's willing to work with me. Um, I'm proactive about my care. I, I do all I can to be a compliant patient um, and keeping my appointments and um, if I feel a doctor has been you know inappropriate with me or a nurse doesn't understand what my care is you know I tell them I give them the phone number of my pain specialist and say call them and I also keep records uh, in my own home of my care from my doctors about every six to nine months I will ask my pain specialist to give me copies of my record so that I know what's going on. So no matter where I go, if like we're on vacation, I can take that information with me so that people understand, you know, what I'm going through and what I have been through. Um, so anyway, um, I just wanted to let you know that's what it is for me when I say I suffer from migraines. And um, if you do let me know, what you do to take care of it, how you have handled it. If you have a uh, cervicogenic migraine, which is the technical term for mine because it starts in cervical joints and goes up into my head, um, you know, let me know how you do it, how you handle it, what things that you do to make your life better, uh, to have better quality of life. And, um, and as a patient, don't be afraid. <laughs> I have learned to exercise my ability to use my mouth and talk. And, um, but I do it appropriately because being angry and whatever with doctors and nurses, even if they're being angry and nasty to me, it gets me nowhere. Um, so anyway, time for me to take a nap and um, blessings.